Well, that's a pretty interesting scene, isn't it? Hey guys, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a project upcoming on the Apostle P channel. It's pretty exciting if you're into traditional knives. Stay tuned and we'll talk about it. Hi gang, Rob here. It's the evening of 9 April 2014. And yeah, this is kind of an interesting array of stuff on the sharpening bench. Uh, got a book for you and I, I thought maybe I would do a book review uh, in this video, but it's just not going to happen. <laughs> uh, interesting story surrounding the book though. I just can't sit here and talk about a book uh, for very long. But uh, the reason I have this book on the bench today is because my YouTube subscriber Steve from Florida, who, whose YouTube name is How About the Truth, um, not really a channel that makes videos, but a great contributor to my channel and other knife channels. Uh, Steve is absolutely mad crazy in love with traditional knives and he's sort of new to it but he's obviously the type of guy who when he discovers something he likes he absolutely pours himself into it and he has done so with the knife hobby and specifically with traditional knives uh, he's a huge great eastern cutlery fan which kind of brings us to this book uh, and steve shared this with me it's written uh, by a gentleman named of David L. Anthony um, and it is basically a history of Great Eastern Cutlery and going back long before Great Eastern Cutlery was in existence he traces the history of both the Northfield and Tidiu brands of knives and we're talking traces them back a hundred years or better um, Guys, Northfield and Tidiu are both GEC brand names today, but both of them uh, were instrumental in the cutlery industry in the United States a century ago as their own freestanding uh, going concern companies. Um, and part of what has made Great Eastern Cutlery's name for itself here in the 21st century is resurrecting these two old brands producing them as sort of separate product lines under the umbrella of Great Eastern Cutlery. So this book, Great Eastern Cutlery and American Tradition, traces that history uh, with exquisite detail covering the history of both companies and then moving up into the, the Great Eastern Cutlery days. Um, don't it. Catching my tripod here. Look at the interesting page turning. Um, and David dedicated the book pretty much to Bill Howard and Ken and Ryan Daniels, the founders and, and uh, uh, the driving forces behind Great Eastern Cutlery. And then he had uh, Mark Zaleski of Knife World Magazine write a foreword for him. And Mark gives... Uh, Mark gives really high marks to David's book. <clears throat> it's just such a cool project. Obviously, a labor of love. I mean, you know, you're not gonna you're not gonna hit the New York Times New York Times bestseller list with a book like this. He includes some great photos. Th this is the kind of book that'll kind of tell you everything you need to know about the history of traditional knives. Obviously there's not a lot in here about 
WRK and Sons, but uh, some really cool old companies in the cutlery industry that have since gone by the wayside. And then the story of this sort of phoenix rising from the ashes, uh, Great Eastern Cutlery. The reason I bring out the book and the reason I mentioned Steve tonight, uh, I'm going to get this out of the way because it kind of clutters things up a bit. Uh, the reason for those things is going to adorn the table with some pretty cool stuff here. Steve approached me not only uh, about sharpening a couple knives for him and uh, offering to loan me this book, he also approached me with a pretty cool project for a YouTube channel. He he knows that, you know, I've been a knife nut, knife collector, knife restorer, sharpener for, oh, you know, better than 30 years. And he sort of has sensed in me a, an interest in the renaissance of traditional knives. And because he's sort of immersed in that, uh, he and he doesn't like to make videos, doesn't want to make videos, uh, but he likes to do research and he is collecting like a fiend. <laughs> I mean, like a fiend, he asked if, if he provided some examples of modern traditional knives on a regular basis to the channel uh, and did some of the research for me, if I would like to put them in front of the camera and do the Apostle P channel reviews on them. So we talked about it a little bit and you know looked at my schedule and what I've got going on, what I'm sharpening, what I'm reviewing, and you know, we we kind of settled on doing three or four knives a month, you know, one a week or so. And so without me having to, you know, buy the entire product line of Great Eastern Cutlery, <laughs> because Steve pretty much already has, he knows what's coming out uh, for the next year from GEC um, and what they've produced. And <laughs> he's, he's a pretty amazing encyclopedia. So he's going to do a lot of that research legwork for me. He's going to supply um, knives for review. He's going to, we're going to ship them back and forth. I'm going to spend some time with them and put them in front of the camera. And I don't know how long this is going to last or how long it's going to take, but rest assured, my friends, you're going to see a steady diet of traditionals with great research to back up uh, our YouTube videos by Steve. How about the truth? Uh, so, you know, kind of look forward to that over the next months and we'll see how it goes. And, you know, Steve and I are going to kind of trust you guys. If, if we're getting views, we're getting likes, we're getting shares, and, and we're actively commenting on these, we're going to, you know, do this for as long as we can. And if nobody's watching, we probably won't. But I kind of think there's going to be some interest in this stuff. Um, so stay tuned for that, guys. Now, what's on the table? Uh... A couple. This, of course, is a Northwoods Fremont Jack. This one belongs to Steve, and I just offered to sharpen this for him since he was loaning me his book for a couple weeks, and it is extremely sharp. This uh, this particular Fremont Jack, of course, in stag, and Steve is on a major stag jag, by the way. Beautiful example here love the Fremont Jack. It's got, it's got something. It's got some machismo. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a robust Warncliffe kind of saber ground, pretty thick stock and uh, gorgeous swedge. Love the heat treat scale. That heat treat scale though, guys, will sometimes, and this one doesn't have it, but I don't know how much this has been open and closed. But that heat treat scale can develop into blade play because it's not as hard as the rest of the steel. It's soft, decarburized scale. Um, <coughs> so as that pivot works and that knife rubs up against the liners, you're going to get some play. My, uh, my camel bone uh, Fremont Jack has a little side-to-side -side play. Got to do a wipe here. But it's sharp now. It's going back home to Steve. 
I'm gonna put it back in its moccasin. And then this is a Great Eastern Cutlery Northfield Unexcelled number 23. This is a big knife. Uh, this is from my subscriber and sharpening customer, Doug. This is a big knife, four and a half inch long handle, like a three and five eighths inch main blade drop point. This is kind of interesting because it's a Northfield unexcelled <clears throat> with a satin blade. Most of the Northfields are a mirror polish, as you guys know. Beautiful drop point with a nice swedge, kind of reminiscent of Derek Bones' Madison Barlow. I thought in blade shape and frankly in handle shape too kind of interesting it's almost uh, almost seems like the Madison Barlow is a GEC number 23 of course with uh, slimmer because they're single bladed and with a larger bolster I mean it's very close I will say this though Back springs on this thing are insane. And you guys know that I'm, I don't ding ah, GEC for um, their heavy back springs on most models. I'm one of the few guys who actually likes them on the American Jack. Got to wipe this down. But I'm telling you what, <clears throat> I'm not a wimp and my fingernails are not paper thin, but the pen blade on this thing, which is, goodness, I don't know, man, two and two and five-eighths, two and three-quarter inches long. Uh, I don't think I'd ever open it. I mean, did you hear that? It, like, rips my thumbnail out of my finger. And when you try to grab it for a pinch grip to get it after the half stop, it's since the blade is so narrow... It's pretty easy to get skin with the cutting edge. <laughs> I kind of wish I hadn't sharpened it, to tell you the truth. I mean, listen to this thing shut. Like a freaking bear trap. Uh, that is just too much. I don't mind it so much on the main blade because there's a lot to grasp. You have a nice long pull. You can get far away from the pivot with your fingernail. So, which gives you a good leverage and then you can pinch grip it to open up the the second leg and easy to close you know just the standard way but wow wow it is sharp though i don't know if i showed you mm, got my 18 degree mirror polished edge on it going back home to doug tomorrow on friday and uh of course it comes in its beautiful GEC tube. Just a couple of the latest traditional projects uh, at the Apostle P Sharpening Batch. Kind of a long rambling video for no particular reason. Uh, sorry to keep you so long, but just stay tuned for, our, uh, for Steve's and my uh, traditional knife series upcoming in, in uh, future months. Grace to you and peace, my friends, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember, the word is sharp.